Hey Dom, good to be back once again. Yeah, uh, looking forward to today and some Alder Lake information. Uh, obviously, the biggest the biggest step over of this this launch is DDR5. Um, you know, so that's that's the biggest difference in, and it's got a new socket as well. But th in my opinion, the biggest the biggest change is obviously moving over to the DDR5 platform, which offers a lot better bandwidth and um, power and what have you, especially for um, uh, large scale applications, you know, video editing and stuff like that. And, you know, it's it, DDR5 is looking, looking pretty good if you can get hold of it. Uh, there's definitely a large, I mean, I, I, I have, I, obviously I couldn't say anything for the last few weeks in the previous videos we did, but we did some internal benchmarking on engineering samples and stuff like that. And I was incredibly impressed with the performance increases. Um, I was very surprised actually. I didn't expect the, the performance gains to be as significant as they were, uh, especially in single threaded application. Um, I, I was very impressed with the Alder Lake release. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice step up on what I feel has been a kind of a plateau since around the nine series. And um, yeah, performance is great, and it's really taken it to. Um, uh, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I know everybody hates Apple, and I'm not an Apple particular Apple fan either. But they, most PC gamers, there's this tribal culture of you know, like oh my god, not Apple kind of thing, you know. And uh, I'm not a big Apple fan. Don't get me wrong. They do have their place, and they do create good products. But um, I can't deny the fact that the M1 chip has been very, very good. You know, the M chip, the M1 chip and the new Apple and the new uh, M1 Max and what have you, they've been excellent. And the Intel now actually really gives it a run for its money. It's in, in most things, actually, it's a lot faster. So, yeah, I mean, uh, if I had to average it out, I'd probably say 12 to 13 um, percent. You know, and I, when I do benchmarks, I have quite a broad range. So... I test a lot of new AAA titles, um, you know, older games, because uh, personally I play a lot of older games. So sometimes you'll find that the uh, new components don't necessarily play older games that well. Um, uh, so, you know, emulators, I test it on as well, because I know a lot of people like to play their emulators and stuff. So I have quite a broad range of, of internal tests that I do personally. And um, it, it's come up excellent in all of them. I'm I'm very impressed with uh, with the the iteration that's come to the table. Um, it's it just it it's nice because it's going to now make AMD go. Oh, we need to step it up again, you know. And um, over these last few years, like I said, I've, I've definitely felt Intel stagnated by comparison to AMD. AMD, I felt, has been getting a lot stronger and stronger. And I feel AMD uh, Intel, excuse me, has become a tad complacent since around the nine series. And um, I'm really happy that they brought this out. And I, I don't have any, any kind of, um, uh, you know, I, I, no brand. I have no brand loyalty. You know, I'm probably screwing myself over with potential, um, <laughs> potential anyone that wants to sponsor me. But I have no brand loyalty. Um, I buy what is the best, you know. And it doesn't matter if it's AMD and it doesn't matter if it's Intel or whatever it is, you know. Uh, I just, whatever is the fastest at the time, that's what I buy. So, you know, I, uh, I don't get me wrong. When I say I have no brand loyalty, I do have brands that I respect, you know, like Razer and stuff like that. And, you know, I, of course I just respect Intel and AMD and what have you, but, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shoot myself in the foot and buy an AMD processor if it was necessarily slower than the Intel equivocal or vice versa. Yeah, the multi, yeah, multi-threaded applications. AMD's really been stomping it lately, um, and actually, it's nice to see now with the the um, the Alder Lake has actually in, it also improved on their multi-threaded uh, applications as well. And there, you know, I mean, obviously, we have all the synthetic benchmarks like um, you know, Cine uh, 3D and all that sort of stuff. And um, uh, uh, the um, I've forgotten their names now. P PC Mark, 3D Mark, all that sort of stuff, you know, was it that they were called, I keep always getting confused with their original name. I think it was like Future Onion or something originally they were called, um, you know, pretty old school, you know. Um, I can't remember the new, what they're called now, but yeah, the PC Mark software and stuff like that and um, all those bits and pieces. And, uh, you know, you have all your synthetic benchmarks and they don't always necessarily reflect you know, real life sort of uh, application and performance. So when I do a lot of my benchmarks, I do those as well because it's interesting to see what they get, you know. Um, but you know, 
you throw up uh, two equivocal systems and a couple of games and play them similar and then record sort of frames per second and bits and pieces and stuff like that and you know see which one holds better and which one has higher frames per second it, it gives a much better accurate but you know then i'll get like videos and i'll encode them in you know h265 264 and all the different bits and pieces you know and use a different codex and see which ones do which and you know we'll extract zip files and things you know get like a large two or three gig zip file and see how well it's handled and and then smaller ones as well and what have you so uh my personal benchmarks i tend to be quite broad um takes me a while to get them done but I, you know i'm I, I don't rely purely on synthetic benchmarks because they're you know they're easy to optimize you know whereas most like games and bits and pieces of software don't have the kind of you know a benchmark is designed to specifically benchmark that processor you know but that doesn't necessarily mean that it translates perfectly into your real world application so i have to say that on the intel all the lake stuff i am very impressed with real world application where i tested in a few games and uh applications and stuff like that and it's definitely stepped up its game big time i am impressed with it very impressed it does indeed i mean obviously in the last decade we've seen a lot more offloading onto gpus because gpu processors are incredibly fast especially for video editing um filters and stuff like that huge advantage using um you know like cuda software and um what have you i mean it's you know there's it's almost not comparative between a, a processor of a, a cpu processor and a gpu processor gpu is just significantly faster for things like video editing and stuff like that you know if, you, if you're getting 30 frames per second in your video encoding on a cpu the odds are you're with a decent equivocal gpu you'll probably be hitting like 120 frames per second it's a it's a big difference you know but there are you know obviously each each component has its own uh job to do you know so um and you just want to find stuff work that works harmoniously together and um uh, i mean i'm really old school when it comes to pcs i mean i was building pcs and doing pcs back in the the 90s you know like early 90s before internet it's so weird that i was alive before internet like i still can't i still, I still can't conceive that i feel like I feel prehistoric when i say that you know oh my god i yeah my dad bought yeah my dad bought like the whole we had bookcase full of uh, britannica um encyclopedias and i was you know every time you wanted to reference something i mean god it was a mission you know and it's obviously not updated so if any new you know information came out i mean now you can access any kind of new scientific data or information is instantly published on the internet and it's it's so weird thinking i, I know it's crazy it's crazy it's having a conversation about cameras on phones as well i mean i wish i had that kind of stuff when i was younger because there's a lot of things that i would have loved to have uh, had the pictures and stuff of me and my mates when we were younger doing things and uh you know but it's i mean yeah i'm obviously from the very old original kind of you know i had a i had black and white uh, or whatever you want to call it monochrome green screen bbcs and stuff and amstrads and things like that you know 486dx2s and all the 386s and all of that sort of stuff and you know i i during the the night late 90s you know i had a i did have an incredible bias against amd because uh i worked in a computer shop and uh the amd k5 was the bane of my existence um uh, you know don't get me wrong they stepped it up after that with the barton series which was amazing and then you know i grew a little older and wiser and i realized that you know i don't have to be completely loyal to intel but i mean it, i think it was just uh i have ptsd from those amd k5 series honestly man it just they 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 nearly broke me um it does beat them in in a lot of various things cinebench so if we're taking say the i9 uh 12900k and comparing it to the 5950x for example which would be a, a the similar kind of um amd equivocal you know there's there's a solid um uh, i was i was getting probably a solid 10 percent easily difference between them you know um and the same the same uh, a slightly smaller difference between the 12700 and the 5900 maybe seven or eight percent difference um this is in cinebench for example um you know and then the the, the 12 the 12600k actually came in slightly lower than the 3900x which i think would be the uh, the other equivalent the uh the r9 so uh, i mean again there's there's still potential optimization to be done um you know when a new gpu comes out for example sometimes you will find that it plays some games slower than the previous card you know but it, it comes down to driver optimization and stuff like that so 
you know, uh, always on initial benchmarks. Um, uh, again, take them with a slight grain of salt because there is going to be more optimization. Um, and I'm hoping that with more optimization, there will be, like I say, on the, um, uh, you know, I didn't expect the uh, uh, 12600K to come below the 3900X, but it did. But I would expect that it will probably, uh, and it was only a difference of probably like two or three percent. It wasn't a major difference, you know, but I expect that that's more down to optimization of the uh, the drivers and windows and what have you, which will start coming, you know, um, in the single threaded, though. So not the multi threaded, which is obviously the multi threaded is where AMD usually shines significantly. And this this time, the the, um, you know, the uh, the two top Intel CPUs did beat the two top AMD CPUs uh, in the single threaded, though, the um, the uh, the Intel's were very good, um, probably about 15 percent over I mean, even even the 12600K beat the 5950X by a good, like, um, maybe like 16%, 17%. So single-threaded, it, it did very well. You know, obviously, we're talking the AMD's slightly older architecture and, you know, the, the Intel's slightly newer, but it was an impressive, impressive in the single-threaded. And I think, I think if you're looking at building a PC right now and you've got gaming in mind, I think Intel's the way to go on the new Alder Lake. Yeah, so we've obviously changed socket again now, um, which I don't think has changed now for the last three generations. Is that right? So now we've moved on to the socket 1700. Um, you know, so it's a slightly bigger socket as well. Um, the previous one was the 1200. Uh, not quite as big as the 2011 socket, which was the, um, uh, uh, you know, started on, was it the, uh, was it the seventh gen? Sixth, no, sixth sixth gen i think it started didn't it with the 2011 socket so it's not quite as big as that socket but um you know cpus are tending to get smaller obviously we're using smaller dies and stuff like that but yeah i mean one of the one of the main one of the issues is now obviously that if you wanted to upgrade to the older lake you need to buy a new motherboard and i would probably recommend going on to ddr5 as well um it does you can get motherboards with both iterations of four and five from ddr but i would i would say if you're if you're buying a whole new socket board and what have you then go for the DDR5. It is more expensive. It's probably about 40% more expensive. It's not cheap at the moment. And it's really difficult to get hold of. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the whole range is slowly trickling in, you know, and it will go from anything from the small micro ATX boards, probably around 70 to 80 pounds up to, you know, the, the sort of rampage and the low sort of bits and pieces, which are going to be a lot, lot more expensive, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, DDR5 in itself is just a bit of a pain to get hold of right now. And it's the pricing is, uh, uh, you know, I mean, what we've seen in terms of what we've been offered by distributors is about 40% more expensive than DDR4. So it's not a cheap upgrade at the moment, that's for sure. Um, but it is an upgrade nonetheless in terms of performance, you know. So you pay for what you get, you know. Um, if, if you're willing to wait, probably... Uh, it's very hard to gauge now. Previously, you could, you know, pre-pandemic and all of this um, uh, problems with TSMC and lack of um, semiconductors and stuff like that, you could probably wait three months or so, four months. And once the hype had died down, all the prices would kind of drop down a bit and it would have a lot more availability, you know. But we're, you know, I, just the fact that semiconductors are so in demand at the moment, have been for the last couple of years, I'm... I'm not sure whether we're going to see necessarily a reduction in pricing. I mean, it's, you know, you look at the things like what happened with the graphics cards where people were selling them for three grand, you know? Um, so we may be in another situation where people are going to be now purchasing up all these DDR5 modules and CPUs and stuff and selling them for an absurd amount of money due to the lack of availability. And I'm hoping that's not going to happen, but, you know. It's... It's just everything, really. It's it's the fact now that there are every single electronic item, you know, and there are so many of them nowadays, require semiconductors. And there's just, I think there's only like 10 companies in the world, really, with TSMMT being the biggest one that manufacture them, and they just can't keep up. Um, I mean, if anybody out there wants to open up a uh, silicon processing semiconductor company, now is definitely a good time. And we don't have one in Europe. So, I mean, Intel was supposed to be coming to the UK, but that kind of got... So it looks like Intel will be opening a semiconductor um, uh, place in, in Europe. 
which will be great, which, but it's probably going to be a couple of years or so before we actually see any kind of, you know, net benefit in terms of their production scale and stuff like that, you know? Um, so it's just, it's just really a fact that there is, you know, I mean, smartphones, laptops, tablets, uh, everything, cars nowadays, you know, um, everything requires these semiconductors. It's, you know, and it's just, there is just such high demand for them. And that's the problem. No, 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 we do. We do everything. Yeah, yeah, we do all, we'll do all of them, any range. We, we, you know, like I say, we have no, we have no affiliate, you know, we have no direct tribal affiliation with anyone. We just love computers and uh, hardware and stuff, you know? So, um, uh, no, we'd never lock ourselves down into one brand. Um, I know there are certain brands that do that, like EVGA is purely NVIDIA and stuff like that, you know? And, and it can work for some brands. I mean, EVGA has made it work very well. Um, I, uh, you know, like I said, I don't have brand lo loyalty, but I do have a lot of respect for brands. And I think in terms of GPUs, out of all of the GPUs I've used throughout my lifetime, EVGA has been the, consistently the best, the best uh, brand that I've used personally. And um, I generally tend to buy EVGA GPUs if, if obviously I'm getting a, an NVIDIA, but if it's, if it's AMD, then probably Asus. We've got the, we've got our edge series, which is the, uh, the customized glass cube, um, you know, which has got the handle on it and stuff incredibly light and what have you. And, um, yeah, yeah. Those are the edge ones. Yeah. That's the edge series. And they're, they're really nice cases and so that we've had custom made and uh one of them's gone into sleep mode <laughs> behind me so the lights have gone off but um you know they uh they're unfortunately not all the lakes um we're very uh tight on um uh like i said uh, availability is incredibly tight if you um you know we launched uh pre-sales yesterday 6 p.m um and we'll be shipping i think everyone's allowed to ship on the 4th of november is uh, the shipping date um, that will be for everybody in the industry, um, but it's stock is low, so I haven't been allowed to take one. <laughs> um, we've only well, we've only got we've got the engineering samples, but we haven't we haven't been able to build any retail systems as of yet because just stock is low. Um, it's hard to get hold of. So yeah, I mean, I I, I think if you are looking to build a PC now like immediately within the next three or four weeks, then I think you, and you, that's in, within your budget. Um, I think even going from the i5 to the i9 range, all of the Intel stuff is well worth purchasing right now. Like um, I, I, you know, like I said, I have no allegiance to, to AMD or Intel. This is just purely based on, you know, figures and what have you. And the Intel is, is the performance one at the moment. You know, and um, like I say, it's a new socket, it's new RAM, and what have you. So it's definitely future proof as well, because uh, I'd expect we'll probably see like three generations out of this socket, like most of the others. Yeah, so it's it's slightly it's well, if you so the old socket was twelve hundred pins, this one's seventeen hundred, so it's you know fifty percent, just under forty percent bigger than the previous one, but. Not quite as big as the Socket 2011, which uh, I think was, yeah, this, the 5, 6 series. And um, so they were 2011 pins. So, I mean, they're, yeah, so they're in between those two, if you, if you know them. So, yeah, slightly larger than the previous gen, but slightly smaller than the older gen. Just be careful. Um, pins are obviously very delicate. I mean, it's not as bad as it used to be. I mean, we went actually from what was ridiculously easy. I don't know if you remember the, um, when we had the slots, like slot A and stuff like that, which was just literally like a, uh, which was literally like a GPU slot or, you know, an ISA slot. Oh God, ISA, PCIe slot or PCI slot or something like that. So that was probably the easiest because the processor came on like basically a daughter board that you plugged in, you know? Um, and then we moved on to, oh God, was it socket 939 or 775, something like that. I can't remember. And they were horrific for pin bending. Um, I mean, they were just a nightmare. And, and if you bend a pin, um, my best advice to you is to use, you know, mechanical pencil. So they're really, I mean, I, I fixed so many pins with mechanical pencils. It was literally in my toolkit. 
um you know and like all mechanical pencils come with a slightly different you can get like 0.5 mil 0.7 mil stuff like that and they usually slot nicely over the pins and you can warm it a bit with a hair dryer to help make sure it's not as uh, brittle obviously don't warm it so much you melt any of the solder just you know put the hair dryer on the sort of warm setting you know not the boiling hot one warm it up a bit and it's actually quite easy to manipulate the pins with the um with the mechanical pencil you know and i have fixed a lot of bent pins with that i've, I've replaced sockets as well because sometimes replacing sockets is just easier you know you can just buy a socket from like um uh, rs electronics or um you know farnell or something like that and you just solder a whole new socket on because it's just a lot easier than replacing a whole load of bent pins but yeah i mean if you do bend a pin like just it's it's really just about put, not putting too much force on it just it should literally just uh, and when i put them in i kind of just I, you know i drop it from a height of maybe like two or three mil and it just drops nicely on so there's no force or anything and then when you're bending the thing to close it, it it shouldn't be particularly difficult you know it's like it's like finger tightening a, a nut or a bolt or something so um I, I mean, it's a lot rarer nowadays to bend pins, but like I say, the best best rescue I've ever used, and I still use it, is using mechanical pencils and a hairdryer. Or, well, I mean, I say a hairdryer. Usually, I use a heat gun, but you know, most people probably don't have a heat gun. They have a hairdryer, and it will work just as well, just to kind of make sure that when you're manipulating the uh, the bent pin, it's not as brittle. Uh, so, but yeah, just just be careful. Really, it's you know, take your time. No need to rush. Um, you know, I've I, I've could probably tell you a million stories about broken processes bent pins water all over systems i mean the amount i mean that's probably my biggest is the amount of times i have had water cooling systems leak everywhere i mean back in the day like you know when we were initially starting water cooling i mean it was you know we were so like 12 volt car fans and car radiators and then you know custom putting together like a block drilling our own holes threading our own stuff we didn't have the same fittings you'd use like bsp plastic fittings i mean it was just a, you know it was a lot lot more chaos you know even even when the initial water cooling stuff came out it still didn't have it's nowhere near to the, the you know the the finite uh like um engineering precision that we have nowadays you know it was still very very in its original kind of thing and i mean even you know there were you know just the stuff would leak or there wouldn't be even if it was from some companies you know like some of the gaskets weren't sealed properly and i mean i so many stories about water cooled pcs and and leaks and stuff like that and you know i used to do things with ice chests you know you've got like a big uh I can't, what were their names igloo i think was the brand um they do like the cooler boxes ice chests and stuff you know and you'd get all your you have your water running into there so it would be like i mean it just got crazy we've, we've got the experience you know we know we know what works and what doesn't and you know you you start to learn about all the sort of dew points and stuff you know obviously with my my big computer i have the uh the big Haley chiller and um you know i i have it <laughs> i have a, a thermometer in my room obviously to to tell me what the humidity or temperature of my current room is and that means make sure that i don't set the chiller to too low so that i end up getting condensation on the uh the blocks and the pipe work from the dew point of the room so you know i can manipulate it with that and stuff and what have you but obviously i mean some people you know what i've done it before you go to the extent of obviously waxing your motherboard and using things like this to make sure that if there is condensation it doesn't obviously damage any of the hardware and what have you which you do that with stuff like uh, phase change cooling and things anyway and lnc and stuff so but i mean it's just it's the whole reason i haven't uh, upgraded my pc is it's just such a nightmare when you have that amount of kind of cooling yeah like i say i'm very i'm very confident people are going to be happy with them i'm i'm very impressed with them and i'm very happy with where it's uh where Intel have bought these, you know, I'm I'm excited to see AMD's response as well. You know, we're live now with our sales. We've we've got the pre, you know, the pre-sales going. We'll be shipping on the fourth. Um, so if you guys want to look at, we're only doing them in systems at the moment due to the lack of availability. Um, we're not selling the the components individually right now, just because they are incredibly hard to get hold of. I think most e-tailers are pretty similar. Um, I don't know whether overclockers are doing them just in pre-builts at the moment or what have you. I haven't had a chance to look at their website, but, um, you know, overclockers and scan and stuff like that. Most e-tailers will probably be doing similar at the moment. I think 
unfortunately, I think it's going to be hard to get hold of the individual components right now. Especially DDR5 is proving an incredible difficulty. Have a good day, Dom. Thanks again, man. Bye.